Good morning, world. I am going to do something I've been meaning to do for a long time. This is my first book, Every Day Naked, Sacred and Profane Morsels of Truth. I have heard it's funny. Um, I've never read it on video, and I'm going to do that today, just for a few minutes so you can get a little taste of it. You can still get this book on Amazon. And it's only in hard copy. A publisher actually paid me for this book. Um, the rest of the books I've written are all digital. So we are going to start with, how about the first chapter? Having it all is asking for nausea. You can't have it all. If you try to have it all, your hair falls out the in-laws hate you, and your husband begins an affair because you're out improving yourself at an improv class followed by jazzercise. There's something inherently wrong with having it all. It implies that there is enough time in the day to give yourself a complete pedicure, help the kids with their new math that you don't understand, and save the world from pollution. Then, on Tuesday, you can earn busloads of money being a Hollywood screenwriter or a best-selling author, then make a well-balanced meal from scratch and enjoy a stunningly provocative intellectual conversation with your lover right before you fall asleep. Oh, and right after dizzying sex that the kids won't hear on the other side of the bedroom wall. See, it doesn't happen that way. There are gaping holes in this type of logic. I, for one, barely have time to pick up the litter on my own lawn, let alone save the planet from toxic annihilation. Last night, my doorbell rang during the escalating battle that accompanies every bedtime for my ten-year-old son. We've been doing this for a decade, and we still don't have it right. The doorbell rings at 8.40 p.m. It's an appeal for money by a twenty-year-old girl to clean up the Earth's water. I said... I'm putting my son to bed. This isn't a good time. She says, Do you want me to come back in a half hour? No, you can come back when hell freezes over. And then we'll have plenty of water. I just said, No, don't come back. Then she says, Don't you care about this? Then I lost it. Do you have children? I asked her. Instead of answering, she spinned on her heels beating a hasty retreat. 8.40 p.m., please. Of course she doesn't have children. When I told her it was 9 p.m., she said, it isn't 9 p.m. yet. That sounds like a person who will be nursing a beer with friends after bothering citizens to cough up money for clean water. When I thought I already had this covered every time I send a check to the IRS. No, I don't want to save the world at 9 o'clock at night. I just want to finish a sentence without being interrupted and read to my kid and be able to kiss my husband once a day and have fresh laundry to fold and an ability to pay the rent. Is it asking too much? I realized I can't have it all because I can't even stay awake long enough to have it all or to finish a sentence without being interrupted. This is slowly dawning on me. For some reason, I think I can simultaneously write my memoirs, a screenplay, a book of essays, finish my short film, run my own photography business, and be a full-time bread-making, nurturing mother and sexy wife who knows how and what to do in bed, and also, by the way, be a stunning conversationalist. Did I leave anything out? And I can't. I can't have it all, and I'm beginning to see that I don't even want to have it all. It takes far too much energy to maintain constant wit and resourcefulness and daring and make the beds, too, without getting a permanent eye twitch. I wish I could get rid of the one I already have. I'm beginning to accept the reality of things piled in stacks littering my life, tall columns of items that are meant to be sorted, things I'll get to later. I need an assistant, but I'm too cheap to get one. I think I should do it all myself, and that is ludicrous. I'm doing the work of three people now, and not finishing what I start as it is. What makes me think that I can now hire a person to help me? 
because the stacks are getting bigger and I don't want to be swallowed up by them. I wrote this book when I lived in Palo Alto, down the street from Steve Jobs, and it's still available. I have since written three more books, which I will read some of them to you, but if you are interested, Amazon, Everyday Naked, Sacred and Profane Morsels of Truth. Enjoy.